Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Fox Squad Podcast. We are at episode number 53. And as you can see, we're not in our usual spot. Uh, we are here live at the Texas Beer Refinery. Um, and we're here with a member of the Texas Beer Refinery family, Brian. Yep, Brian Kircher. All right. Say, say hello to everybody on Facebook. Hey. Whatever. All right. Uh, so real quick, you know, as, as always, you guys know, David, this is John. Of course, now we made a new yeah, friend, Brian. Yeah. So, um, what are we drinking today, John? Oh, well, I'm drinking. Uh, I'm staying with the Mexican IPA. You had the Mexican IPA uh, like we drank the last time. The last time uh, we were uh, given by Brian uh, yeah. a growler. And, um, hey, how's it going? And uh, every now and then, the, the viewers, they get to post stuff. and they Yeah, can, uh, they, they, they yeah. can talk on there. They'll whatever. talk to yeah. us and Good. everything. So, if they have any questions. They're home but, drinking, um, too. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, we, uh, he gave us a growler. Uh, a Mexican IPA, and I can't get away from it. Uh, it's some great sorry. stuff, man. That that's our top selling. It is. I would, and Texas Blonde is up there, but that's. It's you funny because um, you know when I when I, after I drank it for the first time, I was extremely impressed. I was like, man, this was uh, this is amazing. Um, and uh, it had like the citrusy aftertaste, you know, to it. Key that, lime. Yeah, and he told me that. I'm like, yeah, there it is. You know, beautiful. Um, right now, I'm drinking the Texas Blonde. And this is what, uh, 5.3 alcohol by volume. The Mexican IPA was six what, 6.6? Six 6.6. Six. Six. That's, that's a pretty damn good beer. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, I was impressed right here because we, we were kind of looking at um, this little cheat sheet, I guess, that, that Brian had had uh, passed along to us. And has been, are these all the beers that you guys covered? You know, those are w- or like, like the, the most, like the yeah, the, the most part that we're, we we try to have, you know, available to drink, and then there's obviously a you know revolving door of, of you know specials and stuff, yeah, the bigger beers that come out. But your staples, those are the ones that you can usually find in stores, right? Stores, we're in some of the HEBs, some uh-huh. of the Gulf Coast HEBs that you okay. can find. Um, now that was yeah. actually going to be one of my questions. Like, yeah. how, how many places do you guys distribute to? Well, it's, you know, it's a little bit all, all over the map, but, you know, we're, we're in some bars, we're in some restaurants, we're top golf. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, we're here right, right down the street yeah. now. So, I mean, kind of meeting some of the demands for, for, for the stores right now, you know, with the amount of, you know, <laughs> amount of beer we pump out of here. It's, yeah. It's kind of hard to say we're in every HEB, <laughs> but it's, it's been, you know, it's been good, you know, wherever so we... you guys have a good number of places that you I guys... I found uh, Mets Guy PA at uh, Specs. And specs, yeah, you'll right. see it at like at HEB. You'll find Catalyst and, and the Mexican IPA for the most part. Hard to find I, I was impressed with the Catalyst, nine point six alcohol by volume. That's a pretty hefty beer. Oh, that is, and it, you know, there's a lot of fans of Catalyst that come in here. Yeah, and I mean, that's that, that was in that. There was a beer, it was a local beer, uh, of Houston. That oh, okay. Just, it just kind of went out, and the Catalyst went went pretty long into the to the final eight beers here. So, wow. Yeah. So that's 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 impressive. that's a pretty top beer. Yeah. Um, okay, so you guys have the Texas Blonde, Mexican IPA, uh, the American Dream. Tell me a little bit about the American Dream. The the, the, the label on it, uh, if you guys can actually, you know what, if you guys can see it over here. Yeah. Um, it's uh, dude right so, in front of so the garage. Yeah, it's, it's kind of the, uh, the the depiction of America. Yeah. You know, hardworking, following your American dream, which you know that's John um, John Hearn, and he's the brewmaster here. So okay. It's, you know, him in the driveway, you know, starting away, up yeah. your dream, <laughs> which now essentially turns into we're sitting here drinking the beers that, I mean, that he's... That's impressive. That's very that impressive. impressive. Cool. Yeah. Um, I have a couple of friends that have done just like the, the small brews, mm-hmm. you know, at home. And the process, they've told me, it takes like weeks. I mean, right. is that the same here, like from start to finish? Oh, yeah. You know? I mean, and that's... You know, again, with with the capacity, the amount of equipment we have to brew a certain, you know, number of beers, you know, we're, we're trying to expand. We're in yeah. kind of like a phase two. Oh, but awesome. just to, But just to meet, you know, again, all the HEBs and, and that with the addition of the tap room here, it, it really eats into your inventory, <laughs> you know. Let me, let me ask you this. Um, with with the product growing now, mm-hmm. and I guess, and the, and the demand, is there... Um, is it to the point where it's too much, to where it seems like it's overwhelming? You know what I mean? Because well, the reason, why, or, or or isn't it, or 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 it's not? Because it, it, it's mean, a welcoming problem. You know, again, when it, it, hey, sorry, we don't have this available right now because it just it's we can't keep up. It's sold out or, yeah, or oversold, good. and you know. Um, 
out in the street when, when we're selling beer, you know, it's hard to, it's really at this point hard to commit and say, hey, you know, I can reserve 10 kegs here or two kegs here. And there's lots of events and lots of things. So it's kind of like, you know, putting out little fires, Yeah. you know, but once we get into the next, you know, like I guess the phase two of, of yeah, you know, so that's when obviously things grow. And right, right. You guys can uh, distribute more. Yeah, distribute more. And that's what I, I just, just kind of the, the same equipment we've essentially had. And then with the addition of this, the tap room, you know, all the distribution. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Look, I, I thank him right here for, for introducing me to you guys because yeah. I had no idea you guys were even here. Um, he brought me over one weekend. Well, the first weekend we yeah, kind of like he, met. Y'all showed up. Uh, yeah. And I looked around and I'm like, wow, this is pretty cool. And the tanks are just right out back, right? Uh, we're about a half mile down the street. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so they're a little further down. Yeah, a little further down. Well, um, the, I guess the, the process that I was kind of impressed with was... I mean, you guys can bottle everything and, yeah. and can everything just right here, you right know? Here. Right and here. I've never seen a place like, like that before. Right. Not right. personally, anyway. Um, but, I, I mean, I was impressed at the amount of people, obviously, that, that yeah. came in. Yeah. And they were just like, yeah. it was one after another. Yeah. yeah. You know? Um, I know right now you did say it's, it's a little slow. Right. But... It, Weather-wise, that's why. Right, and you but, know, you'll have supporters, you know, people that come in that, oh, hey, we heard about this place. We're yeah. looking up, you know, craft breweries in Houston or, you know, and you got two gentlemen in there that just have never been in here before. And he's one guy from Louisiana and the other guy from Oklahoma, and somehow they ended up here. And, and I think that's that's the niche yeah. that yeah. you guys have. It's right. like, you know, you can see, you know, you guys just pour it or bottle it right there, right can there. it. Yeah. And pop it open and that's it you know yeah, yeah. it's kind of it's almost like the freshness factor you know right <laughs> I mean, and there is an, a, a, a tremendous amount of attention to detail with you know pretty much everything we do with the products in, in the glasses and the kegs you know there's no compromise of you know quality yeah. and, and time and you know john will be the first one if it doesn't taste right let's dump dump it and then and that, yeah that, that was actually another another thing i was gonna ask yeah. you guys. Like, you know, obviously you guys being a startup, have you guys had any, like, major setbacks or, like, anything go wrong? Anything like that? Um, well, I mean, everybody has, like, the missteps here and there, obviously. We got some funny stories. <laughs> hey, that's what <laughs> I want to hear. Just keep that. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, again, it's, it's you know, the, the problems, um, just meeting demand. And, yeah. and, you know, so there's always something that surrounds that. But, you know, sometimes we find ourselves, uh, you know, oh, we don't have enough beer for this. Enough. I mean, could you imagine, though, if we had 1,000 cakes just stacked oh, up I in know. the refrigerator yeah. going, what are we going to do with this thing? Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's, it, it's a welcoming problem to have. So it makes, you know, hey, moving into an, another level of... of yeah, of, and especially of, as a startup, yeah. you know, you guys yeah. are kind of have to do that supply and demand first. Yeah, to see. And just to see to and see. test the waters. Yeah. You know, and then... To me, I, I've been spreading the word, and I'm sure he has too, yeah. that of, of you guys, and the Appreciate quality, that. Yeah. it's, it's pretty Hands great. I, I haven't down. tasted a beer um, like the Mexican IPA as good as it is, as fresh as it, as it tastes, tastes in a when, long time. Yeah. When we, uh, when you gave us the growler, yeah. when, when we left here, he took it, he had never had it, so he took a drink, and he was like, oh man, it's so good. But we, we were going to do a podcast that week. We held that, the growler, for a week, the next week. Uh, the following week and uh, opened it and put it in and it was still it was still as yeah, fresh awesome. as when you put yeah. it it That's, was yeah. so, and that was just poured straight from the tap over here right now and right. into the growler and in the refrigerator um it was and another thing too is when i walked in here being my first time walking in here and uh, uh talking to brian and um i've been to the brewery and this was way different from the other breweries yeah you, you first you approach this place and it's a beach house you know yeah and i just ordered a pizza you gonna eat half <laughs> you just ordered a pizza i just got Tony plenty. Finale. say hello hi guys <laughs> <laughs> you need half? sure i'll eat half a pizza thank you <laughs> and, uh, and then the pizza <laughs> and there you go pizza, pizza. <laughs> People come in and offer you pizza. This is, this is a, see, nothing goes wrong here. It, it, it almost it almost feels like like uh, everybody here that comes here is it's like 
a tight family. It almost, is. It is. Way, it's, you know? it's a family, and you know, there's very, very few places or careers or, or or whatever it is you're pushing or selling where you have a lot of belief with everybody. Yeah. In what you know, what you're trying to accomplish and what you're doing. So it makes it fun to come in. You say, come into work. <laughs> you know, it, I mean, sometimes it, it it is a tremendous amount of work. You know, moving kegs around or you know, getting ready for an event or whatever. But it, at the same time, it's like it, very, it's like that very same. Rewarding. It's like that saying that they say you never work a day in your life if you love what you do right you know? right so yeah so you don't wake up and go oh gosh we got to do it again you yeah know, sometimes physically it's you know demanding with the hours and stuff but other than that i mean it's like you get done with the day and you feel you're doing something good you're yeah. doing things right and that's that's really i think what what we've been after is doing things the right way and getting the word out there getting the word out and there and again there's no nothing no detail ever left and everything we do we really try to do it with you know personal touch and do it right so that's awesome yeah man. that's really awesome yeah um and you guys have uh, as far as like the food a situation you guys just have like truck, food trucks and stuff that come in that so often? Okay. food trucks so we 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 do um we do I would say we interview some some food trucks that will uh, complement you know you guys do beers taste testing? You, really? that, that we serve and you know at the same time you know they're a business partner of ours so if they're going to come in here like the pizza you know that they're, they're so that's what that oven is out there yeah, yeah there's gotcha. a search, saw that. so we'll have you know uh, Mexican food we'll have barbecue um, we'll have. Uh, uh, the guy that won Shannon Toon who won Chopped here in 2016 oh, he's wow. got the Kraft Burger truck he's really? been out here a couple times so you know aligning ourselves with not necessarily the Roach Coach but yeah. the, the people that believe in doing the same thing that we're I doing I guess like the premium type of yeah. you know yeah. food trucks and stuff so like that so if you're going to spend money you know you're going to get a good beer or you're going to get good quality you and know, that, lunch and that, that, that goes back to the attention to detail yeah you know right. you guys uh, I guess pick these, these people to right. Go, uh, I guess to come here and cook, whatever feed uh, feed your patron, right? In a way where I guess it complements the beers, totally, right? Totally, and okay, and, and you know what? It's also nice though to be able to put someone on the property to to you know, and they're they're. I mean, their food's coming in here yeah. for not have to, you ever hear a complaint or you don't hear any, so, you know, the same, the same difference, you know, I, their, their product's as good as ours, but you'll never hear a complaint coming from the food, so, and it's nice, too, for people to come in and, you know, enjoy the beer, but try some different stuff. So, Sounds awesome. Yeah. 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 We'll eventually, you know, open the kitchen to, to, to some items, and, and we're building towards that, but right now, you know, people are enjoying the fact that, hey, today might be pizza, Thursday night was, you know, tacos. Uh, yesterday was uh, burgers. Well, so, well, yeah. Okay, I said this is just a suggestion. How about you move that taco night to Tuesday? <laughs> taco Tuesday. <laughs> taco Tuesday. <laughs> we do Taco Tuesday on Thursday. On Thursday. Yeah. Thursday we're, taco. So we're right now actively just open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Oh, okay. But yeah, oh, we, we've really? started. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, okay. I see. I, I didn't know that. Yeah. So it's, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah. If we were open every day, like we'd run out of thing. beer. You know. Forever. So I guess in those couple of days in the mean in the I guess in the middle. That's like your restock yeah, period. Yeah, yeah. just like kind of regrouping, yeah. assessing what we're, we're about to do and then plan of attack and then move <laughs> into the next week. Um, how many, I guess, how many different ways can people get beer here? Obviously, you have the pint glasses. Correct. Um, and we are the, growler. the growlers. Those growler. are what? 64, 64 ounce. 64 ounce. Yeah. Um, there any other? And then we have the crowler machine. So growler, essentially glass with a G, crowler with a C. So it's a 32 ounce can beer. Oh, okay. That so that's also. the can that we saw. That's what we yeah. saw. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can grab one to, to, to show you. Yeah. Cool. That, that's been, that's also a plus, you know, instead of taking maybe a gallon, you could take, you know, two or three different Those are to -go yeah. flavors to go beers. Wants, I'm out of here. Can yeah. Right. Let's go. Can I have that that's to go? Okay. So that's also a nice where. So you just pour it in there. Cap it, and then is it something that twists around or yeah, seals it's a, it? Yeah, the machines, the machines over there. And I mean, if you want to try to record how it gets done. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, see, here's some, well. these guys ordered well one growler there and and one crowler to go. Cool. Thank you. Just coming on over. Yeah. See, this people. Thank thanks for uh, thanks for supporting. That's fine. I got. I'm gonna tell you something. I asked you not to charge that credit card. I didn't charge it. She did. Uh oh. And then had to. I mean, did I, we void it? My company credit card. Did we void it? No, she charged it and then credited my card back, money back to the card. Okay. I've got to turn that in. Okay. It's my company credit card. Oh no. <laughs> so what can't do, do business like that here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> We're live, so. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so, so I guess the story goes he had a credit card. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Jeez. Don't worry about it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so, um, okay, so he had, you know, the Crowler, which mm-hmm. is a can. Yep. You said 32-ounce can? 32, 32-ounce can, 64-ounce glass. Drink. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, and um, and I guess and in the pints, right? Yep, and the pint glasses. Um, so I mean, we get a good mix of, of the growlers, you know, because you can you keep the growler, so you can bring it back in. Yeah. And get it refilled. You can take it to H E B to have it filled. You can. What? Yeah. So once you own that piece of glass. Really? Yeah. How does that How does that work? Yeah. yeah how's that process? Well, you pur- you purchase it from here. Yeah. Um, and it's a three dollar charge, and then you know, ranging from I think it's seventeen to twenty five dollars, depending on what beer we put in there. Uh-huh. Then you can keep that and, and take it to H E B and get it filled up there, where they're not going to hit you with another three dollar charge. So, wow. You know, yeah. Okay. And if you bring a growler in from anywhere, for that matter, any any, we have some that we brought that we have that we can kind of accumulate. But if you bring a growler from elsewhere, we'll fill that up too. So what about if I bring a paint bucket <laughs> you know what that might slosh around a little bit uh, uh, my brother-in-law my brother-in-law was down here I think uh, a week or two ago and he collecting growlers is like a thing people collect growlers they have different little designs on them and everything yeah. and I know there's like, like five different ones up there five different really? ones so we're going to start you know if you bring in a growler we, we try to go when we're out on road trips ourselves to find you know try no, it's a craft beer business. We want to see what's out there. So, you know, again, we're not just a specific brand to us, but any other craft breweries that are out there, we'd like to experience and try what they have, you know, whether it's in the state of Texas or outside. So, supporting the cause. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. It's, uh, that's good. It's, it's, I mean, it is obviously about competition. Right. But it's also, like you said, supporting, you know, right. the craft, craft beer business anyway. Right. You know, so yeah. That's cool. So there's none that, that are that are essentially alike. So it's nice, you know, you have your fans of the Mexican IPA or some of the other bigger, you know, the bigger craft breweries. You know, people are gonna gonna you know, and, and they embrace both. So it's nice. It's not that you're you're just gonna drink Texas beer refinery beer and that's it. You know, we hope you try some other things and come back and maybe appreciate our stuff a little more, a little differently after trying some other things. It's great. It's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. So and then um, I see. Okay, is it this is is this place like uh, I guess like a family friendly kind of place where you know you bring kids every so often? Yeah. We have a dog walking. Around. Yeah, Frankenstein <laughs> walking around. Frankenstein, you can't see him, but um, he's Ryan's a fluffy, he's, uh, he's basically the dust dog. mop around. Yeah, <laughs> she'll she'll do the cleanup, but you know, kid friendly downstairs. You know, we have um, you know the benches outside and the grass area for you know washers or, or uh, bean bags, cornhole. Cool. Um, and there's some kids stuff down there. So you know, to come in if you're gonna drive in a half hour to have some lunch. You know, yeah. hang out, have the kids instead of being trapped inside maybe a building or a restaurant. How about like any special events? Do y'all ever have like a kind of like a, a Texas Brew Refinery Day where y'all were like, um, I don't know, y'all, you know, uh, just throw a, a party or something like that and just like, a, or just have different events or something? Yeah, in fact, recently we just had like a washers tournament. Oh, okay. okay. So then we'll come in and, you know, we've got their spot, their trophy on the wall over there. Um, we did a uh, masters competition for making some putts, and you ended up oh, okay. with a you know a, a Columbia you know shirt that was green. I so, saw that on, on a, <laughs> yeah. You, you guys posted it on the Instagram, I think. Yeah. I saw a green a green uh, jacket like that. So little little promo stuff like that. Th- those two things went off great. The washers tournament was awesome. It was a nice day. So having it out there and setting up the tournament yeah. and winning. So it was you know watching. <laughs> You know, everybody hang out. So that was exciting. So we're, we're always kind of trying to do something a little different. That's cool. You know, to, to make sure that, you know, everybody's come out here fun. Yeah, yeah. It's experience. Um, okay, so I'm going to go to, like, one of the, like, the typical usual questions. In five years, where do you see the Texas beer refinery? That's a very, very good, good question. I mean, if, if, if I think we stick with the basics and, and what we do today... Um, and just, you know, with staff growth or, or, you know, the facility gets bigger or the brewery gets bigger. I mean, I can really see that, you know, that, that we could be, uh, you know, a brand here in the state that people, you know, recognize, yeah. and, you know, a bunch of hardworking people that, you know, and, and I could, I could see us, um, you know, if, 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 if we keep going the way we're going, I, I think that we, we will have a lot of success in this business. And, you know, to be perfectly honest, I'm not kissing ass or anything like that, but I do see you guys, you know, kind of 
getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Bigger and I bigger. I do. Um, the quality of what I've tasted so far right. is, again, like I said, one of the best that I've tasted in a very long time. Usually we've been like very um, stuck to Carbon right. and their, their varieties. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think we might have found ourselves a I, told, I was telling David, I, yeah. Like, you know, I, I had that growler and I kept it myself. Like I didn't even I didn't need another one. <laughs> I, no, 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 no. The, the one we the one you gave us, uh, right. we used that on the on the podcast. But my personal one, I bought it and I was like, nah. I, I kept it. I didn't even put it on the podcast. I kept yeah. it I shared it with nobody. No, no, no. And we used something else, but we used a, a different. I mean, we've come across a lot of a lot of different beers, and I mean some weird beers. Uh, we. And we actually had people ask questions like, well, you guys like every single beer, and that's not true. We, right. We recently had an Evil Knievel beer. Oh, oh that was your favorite. It was a great <laughs> name. Yeah. And, and, and the packaging was they awesome, They probably too. spent a lot of time on the, the marketing. We go, we go stuff. inside out, yeah. Uh, yeah. outside in, where some of the people are like, hey, if we decorate this. And yeah. that's exactly what I think the problem was yeah. with them. Yeah. And it was one, it was <laughs> one of the worst ones we tasted. Um, but for the most part, we like to pick beers that we like, so that's why right. a lot of times, you know, you don't hear us bad mouth many beers, yeah. right? You know, and again, I think we found ourselves in a place. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> no, we appreciate it. And you know, the people that do come in, you know, they're our biggest supporters. You know, a lot of people that have been around, you know, that come in here. Uh, really want to see us, you know, succeed as well. And it's not a matter of us going, please, please drink TBR. It's yeah. just, you know, it's just giving them the product and, you know, reaping the benefits. Like, there it is. There's the pizza. The the pizza. There's two plates. You gotta help me. I only got one here. <laughs> Sorry, we're on. We're doing like this live podcast thing. Right? Right. Say, say, say hi. Say hi. Say hi, everybody. <laughs> you want to put your dog for adoption on TV? So <laughs> I've got three people that want this dog already, and I've already got my daughter's adoption. Which Beagle, pizza, right? Just the cheese. Oh, like cheese and basil. Mm-hmm. Cheese and basil. You good? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh-huh. Just brought Brian cheese and basil pizza. Yeah, there's, I mean, and they, they do an outstanding job out there, you know, to, to again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it'll, it'll be good. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, I mean, okay, and then, I, okay, I want a little bit of backstory on this redneck red here. As you can see, there. So, you know, one of, one of the, you know, famous radio personalities in, in town, Michael Berry. That's Michael Berry, so, again. Yes. You got the depiction of John, and and then you know <laughs> the, this guy. <laughs> yeah, you'll you'll hear you'll hear in the brewery. You know when they're working, when everybody's down there. You know. Yeah. That that he'll, his show's on there. We've had um, we have our beer at the Redneck Country Club, and, and it's, it's so. So you guys are just you know fans, fans, we're fans of him. And um, you guys what uh, got together? I guess you did something with him at the Redneck Country Club. Yeah, we we I mean we we serve beer there, um, and. You know, again, the, 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 the product I think that, that, that they push or, or thrive for, things that they do there are, you know, again, align themselves with us, yeah. you know, so if they're going to put something down there. That? So why the hell not? Like, why not just kind of like, yeah. co- you know, getting cahoots for something? Right, right. 5.5. Cool. So basically, a lot of you... Right, cause your, average, your average beer is like, what, like a four, four point? Yeah, the Bayou City Brown comes in about three and a half. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. So that's one of the lowest, right? Right. Okay. And then for the most part, it just kind of, you know, flows. I mean, you're going to get, you're going to drink a beer, you're going to get a beer. Well, yeah. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. What is um, your, your highest one? I think it is, is it's just that, uh, it's the Catalyst, the Catalyst the IPA, correct. Nine, 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 six. Nine. Yeah. Eight, cooked with eight different hop varieties. Yeah, that's, that's a, impressive. That's a great beer, and there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of people that again that believe in the catalyst, and they, they come that, in that's and one of those beers. It seems like you have maybe maybe two, and you're good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's all you need. I'm gonna, that's I'm all gonna, you gonna need. try that one next. I'll, yeah, yeah. This whole time, well, Dave's asking these questions and everything, and I'm looking at the, he's looking the at variety. What he's gonna drink next. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, uh, Here, let's get and, the uh, <laughs> catalyst right now. And Brian uh, went off to go get him a catalyst. Um, well, anyways, uh, um, so yeah. Well, uh, one of my one thing I was gonna ask was uh, a lot of a lot of breweries you go to and everything like that. You a lot of the places you go to, they're, they're almost kind of basic. You know, you, yeah. They're, uh, they're just open halls with I, just like serving areas. And yeah, just like okay, St. Arnold's. Yeah. It's just a big old open hall. It is. Place. This, 
this you feels know? more, you know, just legit. Look at that. It's nice. Oh. You're jealous now. <laughs> right? <laughs> How is it? Damn, that's good. Good? <laughs> it's good. The, the, you know the what? Kool-Aid smile on his face says it all. Really. <laughs> all right, all right. He, this is what I was thinking. All right, it's an IPA. And it's... It, and the, you know what's crazy about it? It's not real bitter. Oh, really? It's not real bitter. Um, another thing, too, I figured the catalyst, look how dark and dingy that is. It, 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 it looks like a Breaking Bad situation, breaking bad situation. on the, on the yeah, it, he's. I thought it was going to be really dark, but real dark is not. It's good. This is good? really good, man. Because um, I know the other Imperial IPA that we had, it was it was good, but it was tough to drink. Man, it was it was like it was a little tough. like black coffee like and then that's oh. exactly that doesn't look anything and like like what we had. No, it doesn't. And then the um Oh man, that's good. Yeah, you guys <laughs> gotta try this, man. That's, that's awesome, man. Um well like what but excuse me, yeah, yeah, like what we were saying, you know, it's not like this open area and everything where you you know, you have like a a, a, a bar here and there. Here it's a beach house. What it what it feels like what play, what places like St. Arnold feel like is like a mess hall. Yeah. Like and, and it feels very as as close as everybody is close quarters in there, it feels very um like just it doesn't feel intimate. Yeah. Here you feel like you're talking with your buddies, you know, you're like right here. I mean look at the seating. You can walk yeah. around and I mean it's very uh, it's small in stature. But in a way, that, that's that's the best part of it. Yeah. You know, and not just that, but I don't know if you guys can see this, but they got touch tunes. Um, they got a touch tunes jukebox here, where basically you can just download an app on your phone and pick a song, just like any other jukebox, and it just plays. So it's like you don't even have to, you don't even have to get up out of your seat yeah. to do anything. It's all right here. So uh, that's really awesome as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not lying to you people, man. This shit is good. I'm, I'm curious. Okay, so so it's four, five, six, seven. Uh, I know he did say that they do like you know, special other ones, stuff yeah, like that. I, 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 remember that green one? We saw a green one. We did. Yeah, I remember it was a. Uh, I, I wanted to ask him too if they do like seasonal beers, like you know, if it's like a winter or whatever. Ale or something like that because they had a green one, dude. It was, they had green beer. And I'm not sure if that was like a uh, that was a, a, a St. Patrick's Day thing oh, or you know what? I bet you it is. Uh, but I'm gonna ask him. To I bet that. you it is. But I, um, so that's pretty cool too that they they do like you know seasonal things like that. And sure there's probably more. They have this. Um, I forget what they're called or the proper word for it, but it, it's it's it looks like a paddle, and um, they. It's almost like a, a taste tester, it's like and, a sampler type of yeah. type of deal. And you know, they, they give you four or five different beers and everything. And, I, and that's why I saw it. They had it there. And um, I want to say that uh, my brother-in-law was here when Joe was here. He he had it. And it was, he said it was really good. Really? Man. Yeah. But you it's know, about like what, like five or six beers on there? Like you said, five. Yeah. Five. five. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And it's cool because. I, I don't know how they do it or if you choose like which ones you want or or do you just go from light to dark or you know what I mean? That's a good question. You see, yeah. you, when, when Brian comes back, he, he had to step away for a moment, moment but uh, when he goes back, you know, ask him that. I think that's a, that's a great question. Um, let's see here. What else could we talk about real quick? Uh, let's, let's talk about Marvel Civil War real quick. Mm. Let's talk about our stuff just for a minute uh, while Brian's away. Um, if he comes back, then we'll just cut back. Sure. But, um, okay, so... Civil War, man. It looks like it, right now it, it's seen, looking fucking amazing. Have you seen more and more clips? I that have. You've released, I've releasing? seen more and more clips, and the reviews have come in. I, I tried to not look at anything specifically, but things have come in where it's like it's a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. I know, man. You know how many memes I've seen of of like the trash talk between the DC movie and the Marvel movie? A lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like you didn't finish. <laughs> A lot, man. I mean, um, what was the recent one? I seen. Did you see the recent one where? Okay, you know the the, the one from the trailer we always see where, where Tony puts on. Oh yeah, like, the a, a little mini thing. version, you know, of the the Iron Man gauntlet, whatever. And then he's fighting uh, Bucky, right? Yeah. Well, in this case, um, there was a, a extended video of it where you see Bucky and him go at it, and then, well, Bucky's actually whooping the ass of everybody. And then he jumps in. He's kind of using like a sonic, a sonic. Oh wave. yeah, I think I and did see that. It's bothering him. And then um, he uh, power bombs the hell out of Scarlet Witch. Onto the table? Scarlet. 
um, Black oh, Widow. I did the same thing a while back. Oh man. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I I saw that and I was like, damn. See, in in the context of that scene though, was like she was she kept asking, you know, do you remember, remember me? me? Do you yeah. even remember me? So it had to be like in the beginning. Or something, maybe before they trap him. Yeah. Remember the sandwich trap that we talked about? So then they're. Oh. <laughs> so, so, so uh, I guess it, that goes to tell us that there's still things going on with him. Yeah. There's he still has to be. Yeah, like messed up. Yeah. You know, I'm sure he's still brainwashed in a way, but um, yeah, I mean it, it's looking great from what I'm hearing. Uh, Tom Holland as Spider-Man is the Spider-Man that everybody's been asking for. What? And everybody's like flipping out that he's so perfect, uh, or Spider Man. All right. Um, I don't know. I, a part of me is like, okay, Spider Man's in it, but I'm not excited for Spider. Like, that, that's not the reason I really want to go yeah. watch it. You know what I mean? I'm glad he's in it. You, you, you're saying, are you worried that he's like, is he taking over or like? No, just I mean, I think it's cool that he's in it. Like I said, you know, but that's not my my focus for wanting to watch the movie. My focus is I want to see the battle. Yeah. They were saying that that airport battle is about 17 minutes or so. 20 no minutes, way. 20 minutes and shot with IMAX cameras. Oh. So it's going to be one of the biggest scale type of battles that you yeah. can see. Uh, you know, you know what? Um, did you uh, another another uh, little um, teaser video I've seen was um, the Paul Rudd. Oh yeah. Did you see that one? <laughs> yeah. I'm shaking your hands too long. I'm sorry. Yeah, and he was like, yeah, "I know you, man. I know you. Well, I know you." And then, um, what does he say? He tells, uh, um, well, Captain America tells him, he's like. Um, you have to understand that if you side with us, she will be a fugitive. And he's like, well, what's new? Yeah, you know? exactly. It's like, he doesn't care. Yeah, he doesn't. And That's it was cool. kind of what he is. And you, yeah. know, you know what, man? And like, if you, if you think about it on Ant-Man, he, he, he kind of kind of bitch slapped Falcon. You know what I mean? Oh, he does. And Falcon's in there, it won't happen again. Man, he, he put him in his place. He did. You know? Um, and he showed that he can, I mean, he's not just useless. You know, he can do something. Yeah. Um, it's funny to see a serious movie or well, a semi-serious movie with this like you know tone in place and then you see Ant-Man hey guys yeah. <laughs> it was a so, <laughs> <after that. laughs> and uh have you seen that there's, there's been these little videos going around of Paul Rudd uh like I guess insulting people that are on Team Iron Man <laughs> no that want to be Team Iron Man so you'd be like hey Vanessa I heard that you were Team Iron Man you're dumb <laughs> <laughs> or like, you know, or like, you know, well, you know, well, James, here you're on Team Iron Man. Well, good, because we don't want anybody named James on our team anyway. <laughs> it's like, oh, he's just going around just talking shit. Yeah. And just picking like random names so that way it applies to a whole lot of people, you know yeah. what I mean? I was waiting for the David one, man. Yeah, well, man. There's no David one. <laughs> oh, have you seen the big old, um, the big old displays at the movie theater yet? Yeah, yes. They, I have. Because where, where we live, there's... Uh, there's a, an AMC theater and um, they have these huge. I just and, wanted to do that because it just feels like what? The, and, and it, they make it seem like, well, you know, if there's a group of people, y'all get over there, and there's a group of people, we get over here. And oh, really? Don't you? I mean, because they have all the they oh, have the cap. Okay, cause I've seen I've seen them put together. Oh, I didn't no. see them on each side. No, they That's have smart. They have Iron Man's group over here. They're all looking at each other, and then they have cap side. That's smart. I've seen pictures like already where people on each side families. You know, and like families, <laughs> you know, and pe- families are like switching sides, and I mean, where they're, they're like separating themselves, and so, I, I'm gonna go tomorrow. You're tearing us apart. <laughs> <laughs> start, start screaming at the poster. <laughs> um, so yeah, man. I mean, Civil War. Uh, we're like down to what? Uh, maybe two, three weeks away. Yeah, something like that. Shit. Yeah. So it's gonna be. Big. And already they've already done the uh, the uh, world premiere, right? Yes. Yep. They did the world premiere uh, just recent. I think it was like a couple days ago, like three days ago, I think. Mm-hmm. And everybody was there. I mean, you see the red carpet of that, and you see all the Netflix people there, like the Netflix heroes, uh, the like Agents of Shield were all there. Yeah. Um, and it was kind of it was Luke kind Cage. of it's kind of cool to see that because that's probably going to be the only time that you get to see them all together at yeah. the same time. <laughs> you know, um, there's still been like little things going on like, well, 
are the Netflix and the you know ABC shows or whatever the actual TV shows a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and I think they are they, they better I, be man. I think that, I, I'm sure they're, that they still are but they've been kind of like pushed a little to the side you know like I think Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is doing a thing that's in tone with Civil War but it has to do with the Inhumans yeah it's like their version of Civil War they, aren't they they're supposed to be introducing the Inhumans like but now. That's like down, that's like 2019. Yeah, I know, like way down, yeah. way down, yeah. Uh, but I think they're doing something similar to, to Civil War, but with the Inhumans, where like, okay, the Inhumans have to register. Yeah. Type of thing, you know? But it's not directly like, well, it's because of Captain America and all that, yeah. you know? So it's kind of like they're there, but they're in a different part of it, in a way. I would love to see... Uh, Daredevil show up I, one day. Yes, I'm, 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 oh man, I want to see man like like him go like him in the Hawkeye. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like him just duking it out. You know what I, I mean. I would love to see that. that Punisher cool. come across you know the board or something. Punisher and, and Hawkeye go at it. Okay, you include Punisher though. Punisher gonna, gonna kill somebody. Nah. <laughs> Just, just have him shoot at Iron Man. It won't really hurt him or anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. And get upset and then run away. <laughs> Pull a Batman. Um, the other thing was, uh, obviously, you, you, uh, Daredevil. Yes. What was the other thing? Uh, you said you really liked uh, season two of Daredevil. You finally finished it, right? So good, yes. Man, that was one of my favorite favorite shows. Well, favorite seasons, I guess, for a while. A lot of other people called there. Oh, that's fine, man. We were kind of like, you know, just kind of kept going, so, yeah. Sorry, again. Oh, sorry, man, it's all right. <laughs> Brian, hey, it's, it's business. It's busy. It's business. So, business calls. Uh, but, yeah, I know Daredevil, they're wrapping up their, their second season, and um, the second season, I felt like, there was a lot of people out there that said that the second season was kind of like, like, weird. They said, well, it started off weird, and, you know and what? then it got kind of strong. And I know what you mean. Cause I, I, or, no, no, I know what you mean. What, what, what they, what, yeah, what, what, what they, they mean. Because I kind of felt that. And um, I, I don't want to say it was, uh, like, it, it, it started off dry. Yeah. It really wasn't. It, I liked it from the beginning. Well, you see, yeah. and me too. That was the thing. I, I really didn't have any complaints. Yeah. I'm sure if I rewatch them again, there might be, like, one or two things that I could pick apart. But for the most part, it was it was solid. Yeah. You know, I dug it the whole way through, um, especially when um, when Frank Castle came in and chained up Daredevil to the, yeah. to the thing, and they were just like having that talk, that whole that whole scene where they were just talking to each other. It was awesome. I loved it. And what do you think about John Bernthal, his Punisher? I think he did it. You think he did it? I think he did it. You know what? It, it, you know what? When I was done, when I was done with the the the, the season. I was like, put in Punisher Warzone. That, that, that still is my, my, yeah. my favorite Punisher. That's a lot of people's um, favorite Punisher. And a lot of people's not favorite Punisher either. And, so. uh, I know, I know. Well, and, and he he did damn good. I think he did really, really good. Um, I, I like his, his attitude where... Um, it's I don't give a shit. Yeah. If, if you're the if you're the perp, your society's scum. Yeah. You don't that's deserve it. to no, walk the streets. No, no, uh, no turning back. No, no, no reasoning with him. That's it. It's, it's like, over. You're a piece of shit. Uh -huh. um, one of my favorite parts was the prison scene in the cell block where he took everybody out. Where they released him and then they released everybody else out of the cell. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And he just was going on a rampage. Yeah, and, and, and how he did the everybody. skull. Yeah, <laughs> that was so cool though. Um, and then I, was, I was surprised. I was really surprised at, at Kingpin showing up. I, you know what, when I, I started, knew. when I started, see, when, on my side, when, when I started watching it, I was like, you know, okay. And I didn't even think about the Kingpin. And when he showed up, I'm like, oh yeah, uh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> You know, so I, I knew I was just waiting. I was waiting, like okay, when I I, I figured maybe like way down. down I love the line. that dude, is kingpin though. He is. He's, he's perfect. He really is. Uh, Vincent D'Onofrio, I believe. D'Onofrio. Um, yeah. Um, what about that? Okay, okay, because the first season had that hallway scene, the hallway fight scene, with Daredevil. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, what did you think about this hallway fight scene? Fighting down the stairs. Yeah, down the stairs. It went all. It almost looked like there was no cuts to it. No, it was but just all one the, take. There, there was cuts, but they were so planned out perfectly. Like if somebody got in the way of the camera, that's where the cut yeah. happened, and then you couldn't even tell. That, yeah. that was bad, man. I mean, the, you, you, what did he do? 
He took out the power shit. Threw him in the elevator. Yeah. Push down button. Elevator's going down. He's whooping ass. He's busting All the way too. down. He's busting lights so he can make his way down there, but also, you know, disorient. Yeah. You know, to disorient the, the other people, and he can still see. So. And he's taking them out left That's and perfect. right, and it's just... And you know, and, and, and with his like Teflar outfit and everything like that, he just yeah. do whatever he wants. And that's the other thing. Shot <laughs> I, I really like his outfit. Yeah. And I like the fact that the upgrades. The, I like the fact that they busted his helmet. Yeah. And he was wearing it cracked. Like he soldered it. Yeah. Like he had the dude solder it down. He was wearing it cracked for a while. <laughs> and then they gave him, you know, the new one. The new one. And it was like even more reinforced. It, I almost feel like. We got shot in the face, right? Yeah, that's what I was gonna Point say. Blank. Didn't he? Yeah, because he pulled out. Dude, the they little, pulled the, the Batman. Little revolver in him. They pulled the Batman on him. Shot him right in the head. Did Did he get thrown back a little bit though? He I did. can't he remember. Fell off. Remember, See? he fell off. See, so that's what that's what they did right. What they didn't do with Batman. What's that? In the movie, they actually made him like you know get shocked by it or whatever, thrown back. With oh, Batman, that's right. They when shot they shot him, him in the back of the head. Didn't do anything. Turn around. He just turned around like. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, you know, they, they they seem to be having the more I don't want to say more realism because it's hard. It's, I hate to say that word when we're talking about comic book movies because it's only as real as you can get. It's real. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> but they, they they have a little bit more detail with those things anyway. Yeah. Um, and and it's a top out. It's a show. It's yeah. not even a movie, and they have that kind of detail to them. Well, you, so you know what? Cool. I mean, even though it being a uh, uh, you know comic book whatever you know being trying to make it more realistic and then one of the final upgrades he gets is his baton remember yes and then now he can like you know swing when, and when, when they showed that I went oh shit like yeah. loud. Monica, Monica goes what what happened I go he got his baton <laughs> she's like what are you talking about did he already have that <laughs> she, don't even, she don't even know she hasn't seen she hasn't seen it at all no so she doesn't she knows nothing about Daredevil my little girl walked in fell in love with the show <laughs> she's like when is when is the next season coming out like, I don't know and she's like when's Flash season 2 coming out like it's already happening it's just a, you know it's still on yeah it's, on I, it's, it's almost done it's almost at the end so you let me know if you want those episodes uh, I'll, uh, I'll find course, you a, I'll find you a link to of stream course. them or whatever but um, the second season of Flash has been really solid Man, I like it. I, I can't wait. I like it well, so much. But it's, I, it's a different animal, though. Like, the, from as far as Daredevil and, you know, Flash, obviously. One thing that I liked, on, uh, uh, again, on the, the Daredevil thing is that, um, Daredevil having uh, the, his, uh, the guy who made his suit make up yeah. to her, her suit. Yeah. You know? And then her to come now, in. What did you think about Electra? That's what I've been wanting to ask you. I, her accent doesn't match her for some reason. When I look at her, I expect something different. And yeah, it you know, it's not weird. I feel like there's something missing there, and, there I, and I can't put my finger on it exactly. But she doesn't feel like Electra to me. Yeah. You know, like, and and I hate to say it, but I keep thinking of Jennifer Garner. In a way, I keep thinking. I don't know why. She, she fucked it up. Ma no, that. I don't know. Like I, I, I keep thinking Electra, and I keep picturing Jennifer Garner in my head, as opposed to anybody else. Maybe, and I hate to be shallow like this, but maybe it's the looks. Maybe that's what she's missing. You know, <laughs> you know, maybe yeah. they need to, they needed to find somebody a, a little bit more. You know, Jennifer Garner. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but or, uh, who fits the description of yeah? The comic book See, and, and Electra in the comic book, she almost. She almost reminds me of Psylocke, mm -hmm. in a way, where she's kind of like, you know, like half Asian or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's what I think she should be. Um, this one, she just looked like she was, she looked Mexican to me. <laughs> she looked Hispanic. She looked Hispanic. She, look, she looked Latina? Yeah. But then she, she kind of looked Asian at some times. Yeah. She started, she was like British or like English yeah. or something. So again, like, like I said, there's something missing there. I just don't know what it there's is. There's a lot exactly. of things that wrong with that. But I mean, she... Okay, she, okay she, so she's Electra. You know, um, I didn't like her her outfit. I kind of... Well, oh no, her, the, the suit was cool. I didn't like the mouth thing. I kind of yeah. wish... I kind of wish they, they had some type of like... Maybe like a hood thing or, or like a bandana thing or something. I don't know. Um... Um, and then I, I like how they came in, how she came into it, uh, her size. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. She killed another assassin. Yeah, and she and grabbed him. She was like, "These are mine, bitch." You know. And, and uh, um, now, um, what did you think about the whole stick thing with that dude? I don't. You know, there's a part of me that likes him, 
Yeah, but then there's another part of me that's like, he doesn't need to be here. Exactly. What's the point of this? <laughs> you know, for real. You know what it reminds me of? Remember that movie? That the blind like uncle, and he takes care of that kid and everything. Uncle. Yeah. He has a sword as a king. Hey, what's going on? That's one of the Randall system. Really? So that's a. It's basically we're trying to peanut, peanut butter blind. Oh, okay. So that's uh, got some peanut butter cookies and some things in there. Whoa, okay. I want to tell you that like peanut butter. All right. And David and likes I, peanut and butter. And I love peanut butter. You don't. So they give it to the right person. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Yeah, no, 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 no. No. Taste it. Pour a little I bit in no. your it is so good. Oh, it's it's man. It tastes like freaking peanut butter. No, I see, I don't, awesome. man, I'm, I'm having a good time with this. Wow, it has like this. I, look, you can smell it. You see it? That's crazy. It has little bits of peanut butter in it. I'm, I'm or peanut. I should say. Um, I am uh, amazed right now. I'm like kind of like wow, wow. This is really good. You can smell the peanut butter. Oh my god, this is so good. It, it tastes like like the blonde, like the Texas blonde, but just really? peanut butter in. Or like, I keep saying peanut butter, but peanut, you know, it has like that peanut taste. Man, this is, wow. Oh, they should make this a <laughs> usual beer. This is really good. David. Yeah, just for me, I'll come, I'll come drink y'all stuff, y'all stuff, man. You know what? I saw something that, that uh, I know David had mentioned me. Uh, one of the Easter eggs in, in Daredevil was um, the uh, the uh, the scene where Punisher takes the Colonel into that uh, shed. Oh yeah, it's the shed from Evil Dead, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It looks it? like it. It, uh, it. I don't know if it's. It, it, oh, it is exactly. I but it, it was. It damn well looks like it. it did, when I was looking, I was like, this. Is yeah. Uh, there was a couple of other Easter eggs in there too, and I can't I can't think of them right off the top of my head. Oh man, and it, there was stuff in there that was like hinting towards the future, also. Um, but uh, oh, speaking of Easter eggs, actually, the Suicide Squad trailer uh -huh. just happened. That just happened. I saw. I caught one Easter egg that I didn't catch before. When when they're starting to shoot up, uh -huh. you know, in the midst of all those troops and all that stuff, and uh, Harley Quinn is putting on her stuff, whatever. You see Harley Quinn's old jester. <laughs> Costume. The, really? On the floor. You see it on the floor. Uh, I, I need to go look at that. Yeah, it's it's like by a crate, like a big old crate, like a big black crate, and you see it lay, like just kind of like laying across the floor. You see like the little tassel yeah. thing. So that, I thought that was really that was a really cool uh, uh, little Easter egg. Um, the one thing that that they've started to talk about about Suicide Squad was that they've gone back and done reshoots after Batman v Superman came out. Really? And it was it's very coincidental that okay, after everybody was talking shit about Batman v Superman, that they're gonna go back and start reshooting some stuff. And I'm wondering, you know, some people said that it's just rumor though. Some people said that, oh well they're gonna go put more jokes in. So it's not so dark. You know? But I don't know, I don't, to me Man, leave that movie alone. To me, I, they, they might. Okay, movies do reshoots all the time. Um, to me, I don't think. I think it's just so coincidental, though, <laughs> because um, in a way, I don't believe it because they would have to plan everything like, you know, like fast. Yeah. Like, okay, say they get the news from Batman v Superman. Oh, it's, you know, people don't like it. I. It's it's hard to pick up a phone and call all the actors and be like, hey, we got to reshoot all this stuff right now. We got to add some new stuff yeah. and get everybody, you know, ready and in tone. So I think it's just a coincidence that's happening and people are looking at it like it's like it's in retaliation or, or you know, in response to Batman or Superman. I don't know. I don't know. Leave that movie alone. I think the movie looks good right now for what it is. I think it's going to be a fun fucking movie. Um, how do you how do you feel about the, the fact that Batman's in it though? I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to. I'm, I've been thinking about that. And I'm trying to figure out whether is he is he really going to be in it or is he just going to be like a like a memory? You know, like oh that one time. Well, see, I think I think it's going to be a flashback. A fl yeah. Um, there's a scene that I keep seeing where Joker is in his Lamborghini. Yeah. With Harley Quinn. But well, not Lamborghini. What is it? Else? I thought it was a Lamborghini. No, it, it's like some um, that Ferrari. 
is some some man, some dude that like Fiari. Uh, <laughs> It's some dude that made like his own like take on on, on a on a sports car, DeLorean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, and, but like he took his own take on it, and, and you, that you could have like a very sporty uh, like a sports car, but cheap. Tesla, Tesla, something like that's that. That's what it is. It's some yeah. You'll see. And, and uh, but anyways, yeah. That's, that's okay. Something like that. Well, um, yeah. The, well, there's a scene where they're together, and I think that is going to be like the scene where Batman shows up and I think it's like a tall flashback all backstory um, there's also uh, in the trailer have you seen there's like this big monster in it uh huh do you see it very very quickly through the subways through the subway train uh, he like destroys yeah. it okay yeah 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 with like these tentacles and stuff mm-hmm. like that I saw this picture and they zoomed it in it's still grainy but it had a person's face Right? Mm-hmm. The person's face looked just like the Joker. Like the profile. And people were saying, well, maybe it could be like that, that girl, the Enchantress, um, you know, does something to him and makes him this, this weird creature. Thing. I don't know how I feel about that. And they're going to make the Joker like that. Like a monster? Yeah. So they fight against him? I don't know, because as far as, as I've seen, Joker's is just in there, kind of as a setup person. Not really, he's not really in the movie movie, just kind of in places. Um, but I don't know. I mean, uh, is there something else you wanted to talk about? I know you have some action figure stuff. Yeah. Some news. Um, what is it that that's coming out very soon? And right now, Kotobukiya is blowing it up right now with uh, the Star Wars. Uh, they're, uh, the Kylo's uh, are about to hit the shelves. Uh, the Kylo? The Kylo, uh, Kylo Ren. Now, is it just a straight up, like, you know, interpretation of Kylo, or is it, like, different? Like, the, you know, sometimes you have him, like, looking, like, anime-ish. No, it, it's, know? like, what he looks like oh, in the okay. movie, yeah. Cool. Um, now, Kotobuki is not known for, like, moving, you know, like, you know, act, you know, it's, they're not articulate and stuff. It's more of like just so a posable yeah. figure. A, a lot of the times you can slide the arm out and maybe you can put it in another, another it, it may come with another arm to where maybe he's doing an action pose or something. Like a Hadouken? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you started doing this. So, it's more like a force, you know, like a choking you. And, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> like, don't make me drink this. <laughs> don't make me. <laughs> Well, so uh, and then they, they just they just showed a Vader. So oh, they're, they're, they got a Vader coming out, and um, oh, they, that's what they, they, probably were like, they look really cool. I, I've already pre-ordered the Kylo and the Phasma. Oh, okay. The Phasma they've been showing for a while and everything. Uh, How much are those running? More or less. Okay, Vader. He's like 120. 120? Yeah, he's like 120. But I, I think Phasma. I, I don't remember. I got Phasma. I think it was like 70 or 80. That's not bad. I know. And it, and they're what eight nine inches. So it's gonna look cool. Right there. Again, well, we've talked about this before. That that's my gripe about some of these figures, and that's why I don't get them per se just yet. That a lot of times you'll get like the figure arts figures, and they're like oh. this big, okay, or something right. like that, and you're spending like eighty dollars on it. All right, to back you know? that up, this was my complaint, which was my next one was Figma's coming out with another one, and I, I think I showed you. Remember, I showed you yes. my my, my uh, Metal Gear Solid Two. Yeah, it was like a, a okay. snake. Mm-hmm. I paid ninety dollars for him. And he's like about that big. Oh wow! Which is like six inches, you know. And uh, and in you know, it, it, it's no, normally a six-inch figure, like just any random figure, yeah. is like ten dollars or, yeah. or twelve dollars. I mean, he does come with little, you know, other hands, and you can change facial expressions and stuff like that. But still, ninety dollars. Well, Big Yards is doing it again. They're coming out with the Metal Gear Solid Two: Sons of Liberty, but it's a soldier. And they, oh, okay. they're asking eighty five dollars. Oh wow! And it's not. It's a soldier. It's not the yeah. any main characters. It's five dollars less than what the main character was. I would like charge fifty in that. Maybe yeah, we'll talk. Right? Yeah. So um, 
Yeah, so that, that's one you gotta look out for right there. I mean, unless you really, really want it, whatever, I don't. I'm gonna stay away from it. Um, they did the same thing. I think Figure Arts did the same thing with, um, because I think I showed you my um, uh, my Phantom Pain one. Okay. With the red arm. Oh, yeah, the red yeah, arm. Yeah. I have two of them. I have one where he's like in an upright uh, box, and then another one where it's called the Venom Snake. And that one came with a shit ton of stuff. Does isn't one of them? Doesn't one of them have like the sneaking suit, and then the other one has like the with the no, bandana? The s- smaller ones. The oh, okay. smaller boxes. Oh, okay, the smaller okay, boxes. okay. Well, those um, those smaller boxes. I, are those fig? I think those are figma. I think those are figma. Okay, those. They 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 came out with the, the original um, Phantom Pain figure, right? Which mm-hmm. is it's snake, snake. Um, him and like just a couple, you know, sort of, you know, different hands and whatever facial expressions and guns and stuff like that. Then they came out with the the Venom Snake, came out like a, a, a stinger missile and, and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Different weapons, different ha- more hands, more of this uh, battle combat ready knife and stuff like that. And, um, a bunch of things. So it came in a, in a long rectangular box for I think about a hundred bucks, and I paid for that. It's fine, but um, <laughs> pay for that. It's uh, fine. Um, but this, um, the, the, the Figma, the middle, I, I, it's just, this, okay, it, I'm sorry, in that, that same category, that same line, they came out with this, the soldier from the, the Phantom Pain. Okay. And I don't know anybody that owned one. And they wanted $89 for him. Yeah. And it, it looked like Olga Glukovic. Oh, okay. That's what it looked like. It did. No, it like the, the, the striped muscle shirt and yeah. everything with the short hair and the little little cap, kind of like, kind of like a welder's cap. Oh, but yeah. Anyway. That's strange, though. So that one really didn't sell. Um, um, one, of the, one of like the, the big ones that I, I really want is the Bandai. Bandai's coming out with uh, the... Not ba- yeah, Bandai's coming out with the SH Figure Arts, the Teenage Mutant Ninja really? ones. Bad. I haven't seen those. Just think about the, the Power Ranger figure arts yeah. and the Shuttles. That's cool. And they're from the 90s cartoon. That that price, honestly, a piece. Yeah. I, I, would, I think that's worth it though. I think that's worth it for them. They come with different facial expressions and like uh, other like a... Uh, uh, we still good? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. So, I was thinking about, with you know, when we were talking about the problems. And, you know, like the gentleman coming up there. Yeah. I mean, you say you need to take it out. But you know what? The way I, I started thinking about it, talking to Sarah of the story, maybe I digress. <laughs> but he's using his corporate card for work to start a beer tab, and he didn't want to pay for it. He wanted to pay cash. Well, hey, if you're willing to risk using your work card yeah. where you shouldn't be. Exactly. So, but, you know, I guess it's, you know, in the service industry. You know, sorry about that, but I mean the reality is, if you think about it for a moment, yeah, you shouldn't have gave us your corporate. It's work like card. don't use your work card. Don't worry, if you don't want <laughs> there to be like, any on, compromise, dude. and you don't want to have to answer to human resources because it says beer. Yeah, <laughs> don't bring it out of your wallet, my friend. You know, and so so looking back, you know, I mean, I guess you could say those are you know typical you know problems where we try to pay attention to detail. But right there, I mean, he says, oh, just hold my tablet, and I'll pay cash, and she says. It was in, 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 in that's all, about as bad as it gets. It's, it's it's it was nobody's yeah. fault, but it was his, but his own, own yeah. but his own. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. so that's what I just reviewed that with her. But I mean, I guess that that's probably about the worst thing that can happen. Yeah. That that that, that that's about as bad as it gets. And it's not. Oh, hey, this is not taste right. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's <laughs> other things. It's, yeah. It's, you, what, you we know, know what you got though, because yeah. you left with beer. And you know it. exactly. And he'll be back. You know what's funny about that argument is that he was like he had a growler and a thirty. Yeah. And he was like, oh, you, know that's, you shouldn't be running a business you know? like this. <laughs> like, he's walking out of the parking lot. <laughs> he was like, dude. <laughs> I, I, I love that. I, I, that was funny to me. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it, was, it was really good. Uh, <laughs> anyway. but, uh, okay, so this is what you brought me. That is probably one of the coolest things I've ever is, is that Is that like just something like, you know, hey, uh, uh, so you, the Randall system. You know what huh? that is, right? No. <laughs> Explain it to us. So it's basically a way to infuse products into the beer without, you know, going through the brew process. Oh, okay. So it's a, you know, uh, it's got the hop rocket. It's a canister like that. And we, we fill it full of ingredients, like sometimes fruit. We do the Mexican IPA with the so mangoes. So that's, that's why you get the, the key lime and stuff like that in it? No, no. That's no? already brewed. Oh, okay. But if we want to add in something to it. So this one, what I took is Butterfinger and Nutter Butter cookies and crushed them up and put them in there. And that runs through the Texas Blonde. 
So yeah, we call it a nutty blonde. blonde. So you were right on the Texas blonde. Yeah. So the Texas blonde. Yeah. And then, and then I think we'll we'll do it here when the summertime comes, and you have to come try it with the Mexican IPA. But we'll put cilantro, mango, jalapeno, I put bell peppers, oh um, and more key limes in there. And when you when we put the jalapenos in there, oh, oh my man, god, Mexican food. Oh, that is amazing. Dynamite. So it, it takes a little bit of what yeah. we have, and then to change it around a little bit. But now, uh, you know, here, try this, and everybody's like, more, that, more, that more. was great, man. I'll, I'll taste it. I'm like, it tastes like it has peanut butter in it. Yeah, <laughs> he's, a, he's a peanut butter guy. Yeah. And the I was peanut like, butter blonde goes like that. But that's man. a very, when, when we when we occupy, you know, the space to brew that beer, to, yeah. to, to put that much peanut butter in there and clean it out and get, <laughs> it's it's very, to so task. This, this, yeah, it's a task. So this, this is, we'll be brewing the regular, the way John does it. But th- this for for right now. Man, are like, oh, that was, that was great. I was really impressed. Yeah. So they're watching the Rockets and drinking this, and that'll be gone. They'll, <laughs> they'll drink that all day. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and I guess come to a close here. Yeah. But uh, real quick, I wanted you uh, to uh, I guess tell us where can we find you on on social media, website, online, whatever. Yeah. The uh, Facebook page right now. I think we have uh, 13, 14,000 followers, and you know. I mean, what we're really trying to do, I think, is just stick with that. So we're going to post who's the entertainment for the week or the weekend, what okay. the food trucks are. So that's about the best way to follow us. And then, Great. you know, TexasBeerRefinery.com uh, on there. It's, it's a nice it's a nice site. You'll actually be able to see where there's some pins dropped. So if you're anywhere in Houston or around here, if you want to go find beer at an HEB, oh, okay. that's all Perfect. located there as well. So it has, like, a like I guess, a where map. to find yeah. or whatever. And you can click on it, and it ties in with Google Maps and Perfect. it'll get you there. So that'll be probably the two best. And then we have a Twitter account as well. Twitter that we'll put stuff. But the Facebook is going to have the. Uh, what's up, Charlie? Yeah, one second. Um, it has all the updates and stuff. All like the updates there. and everything. There. Okay, cool. So yeah, that's awesome. the best way to follow. Awesome. Well, again, we really thank you. Uh, thank yeah. you for, for, for letting us come for coming and out. hanging out. You know, and you guys have an amazing product. Yeah, thank we'll you. We'll be sure to shout it from the mountaintop. All right. Let everybody know. So thank you again. Thanks. Man. We appreciate thank you. it. Don't bring your corporate card. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, don't cut that out. <laughs> okay, well, did he give the address? So anyway, um, no, so we're uh, we're here live again from at the Texas Beer Refinery in Dickinson, 2709 Dickinson Avenue in Dickinson, Texas. So um, if you guys are here locally in Houston, check them out. Find them. For sure. Um, if, you're, if you can't come out to the actual Texas Beer Refinery, look for their beers in store. Because again, this is probably some of the best beers that I've had in a very long time. Good, dude. It's tough. great, um, and you know, again, I, I don't, I can't say it enough. We, we've had a good time here, yeah, just yeah. hanging out. Um, hopefully, we get to do this again, you know, very soon. So, um, keep me visiting CinemaDeviant.com for all your movies, news, reviews, trailers. Um, hit us up at facebookcom deviant and also facebookcom Podcast. We had it wrong the last couple of times. Yes, we did. Um, you can find me on Instagram at uh, Cinema Deviant, Twitter at Cinema Deviant. Uh, download these episodes on iTunes and SoundCloud. Uh, what else am I missing? Um, subscribe to us on YouTube. You get like the visual uh, version of uh, of our podcast there as well, as well as other things. Um, and John, what are your social medias? Uh, Instagram Bobby ninety four. <laughs> you pause. You pause. Oh well, yeah, because. <laughs> Okay, the, the, I know. This is starting to take effect. This, this it's like really catalyst, <laughs> right? The catalyst. That's yeah. the nine point three. Yeah, nine point nine. Whatever it is. Right. Some of that. Hold on. Nine point six. All right. So the catalyst is taking effect. Um, Instagram, uh, Bobbing ninety four. Twitter is Spawn ninety four AEW, and I think um, my Snapchat is Spawn or uh, Spawn ninety four AEW as well. Um, there's a sneak peek uh, on there, and we'll be on our Facebook page yeah, as well. Yeah, you know what? I, I think we're gonna be uh, like keep streaming here uh, a little bit, and like take some video and take we're some not pictures. Done a beer. Um, we're gonna hang out for a little bit and uh, have some beers. So again, until next time, bye.